Jan Ginadasa. He's an interesting character who made his racing debut in a Porsche, but he now finds himself in an Aussie GT Lamborghini Gallardo. So how does he compare the two cars? For four years, uh, we've been campaigning the GD3 Porsche. Fantastic car. Uh, it was hard work doing that, so funny enough, I thought I'd retire from that, but lasted two weeks, end up getting a Lambo instead. So I think I seem to leave my midlife crisis every year, and this was one of those. So uh, we imported the car uh, from Germany, and uh, it's, it's a little bit of battle trying to understand the car. Totally different uh, geometry, totally different behaviour, and running the Porsche for four years and jumping into this one, it does take a little bit of uh, finesse to, to get this to work. My first exposure was Philip Island. I uh, did particularly well and I felt the car was you know, working with me. And uh, we try to replicate that here, but it's a different track and a different technical nature with Easter Creek. And uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to it, not, not being the home track, so it doesn't help. And uh, you know we're still a little, bit, we're fighting a little bit with the car now, but the guys are going to set that out hopefully tonight. Everyone likes the Lambo, and, and you get more attention than people see. Even your camera guy seems to focus on the Lambo. You know, I thought, hang on, I'm not getting any airtime, so I better get a Lambo instead. That's what I did. I mean, I haven't had this interview before, so now I've got the Lambo, I've got the interview. There you go. It's round four of the Australian GT Championship presented by Pirelli here at Sydney Motorsport Park and the second of two one-hour endurance races that make up this roundabout to get underway. I'm joined in commentary by Darren Smith as the field grids up for a rolling start. Jack LeBrock in the Erebus Motorsport SLS AMG on pole. Clark Quinn, the defending champion in the Porsche alongside him. Nathan Antoon starting Rod Salmon's Audi will go from third and Peter Edwards will start the Marinello Ferrari. He'll share with John Bauer from the outside of the second row. Cars rolling down the traditional rolling start in Australian GT. It's very close indeed between Tony, oh, Clark Quinn and Jack LeBrock as they come to get the green flag. Contact and tunes jumps well. But look at the power, Darren, from the Merc and the run down to turn one. That thing has got enough grunt to outdrag anybody. Doesn't it just talk its way from the uh, Porsche six cylinder there? So the V8 just thumps away. The Audi hooks right up. And wasn't that an aggressive uh, shoulder to shoulder type start there between the Merc and uh, the Porsche? Clark Quinn holding ground. Jack Perkins in one of the Genettas just diving up the inside there into turn two as this field sorts themselves out. Michael Hovey in the 73 car. These little Genettas have put on a great show this year. There's four of them running in the field. Roger Largo dives down the inside in the JBS Lamborghini. It's great to see Rog back on track. He's had a very tough season so far in that car. A bit of damage and had to source a replacement vehicle early in the year, but back on track this weekend. And he's got Steve McLaughlin uh, ranging up behind him as well in the Viper. Great to see the Viper back and uh, big move there for a charging McMillan. Dustin McMillan, who uh, looped it in the warm-up lap yesterday's qualifying, did some damage, very similar to what happened at Phillip Island. They've got the car back on track. Ash Seawood and all the crew down there at M Motorsport worked very hard last night. Yeah, it's Stephen Richards driving that car with uh, that team this weekend as well and thoroughly enjoying the current spec GT3 car. So LeBrock leads the way, and his cold tyre pace isn't as great as perhaps we would have thought because Nathan Antunes going with him. Based in Sydney, the former international open wheel ace, he's raced a lot of radicals here at Sydney Motorsport Park. He's putting the pressure on in that R8 LMS Ultra. Having a look over the shoulder here of Jan Ginadasa, who's finally at the wheel and competing in his Lamborghini after having an issue in Friday practice at the previous round. And he is really enjoying it. Look at him charge past those GD4s, throwing a different class to those guys. So he will push on through past them, but a good shot over his shoulder. Well, when you mentioned an issue, he had a lose out of the final corner uh, onto Gardner Straight and put the thing in the barrier fairly heftily, but it was a big crash with a, a lot of violence, but he walked away unscathed and they've got that car back on track. One of the better presented cars in a very attractive field, it must be said, as Clark Quinn shadows these two warring young drivers in front. It's great to see Antunes back on Aussie soil. He raced overseas for a couple of years pretty successfully, but that age-old story just didn't have the funding to go on with it. Great to see Rod Salmon giving him a go. Hobie spins the Janetta. Oh, that's a shame for Michael Hobie running in the sports class, which is basically filled with those Janetta GT4s. 
Anchun's back at the wheel, fantastic. And Rod Salmon playing the strategy and the tactics using the rules by having a non-pro oh. here as Hovey again. That's uh, not a nice spot to go around at exiting turn four there, is it? Yeah, there's a change of direction there, Darren, and the road crests over very easy to lose the rear of a racing car there. Jan Jitadasa again at the wheel here, working hard at the rider engineering Gallardo. Clearly further issues for Darren Berry there. He's going to come past him for the second lap in a row. He's sharing with Keith Kasuki, the Touring Car Masters regular in the Janetta. And yeah, gets a good run down uh, Brabham Strait here at Sydney Motorsport Park. What a magnificent scream from the Raging Bull there coming down that long straight, really stretching it out, top gear and then back down through the gearbox for this uh, very demanding turn two at Sydney Motorsport Park. Yeah, it's a great noise. The, the same architecture as the Audi R8 uh, LMS V10 engine based on the same chassis, similar engines. Of course, Audi owning Lamborghini, but bitter rivals in the GT3 world and the German-built uh, Lamborghinis, Reiter Engineering, of course, making them Audi Sport, uh, making their GT3 cars in-house. And dramas for the Dodge Viper GT3 car. Just dropped off the road, the 75. Isn't that just the, the absolute quintessential GT car? Front engine, long bonnet, just looks the part there. There's the uh, Ultra LMS, which has got Antunes at the wheel. Now, pit stops in this race. There's a time penalty for seeded drivers, which means they have to spend more time in pit lane. And that's where Rod Salmon and Nathan Antunes will hope that they get a little bit of advantage as Antunes looks down the inside of LeBrock into turn six, gets it done, but went a little bit too hot and gets repassed by the flying Erebus Motorsport Merc. But this is good for Jack LeBrock. It's probably the first time We've seen him in hand-to-hand -hand combat in a GT car since he made his debut earlier this year. Well, we're seeing uh, the leaders challenging. We're also seeing uh, Cook here as well, challenging the Jinnah Dasa, and they're racing in the trophy class as well there. So they've also got uh, Ben and George Fosel tangled up in their own battle for that championship as well. So Jinnah Dasa goes through in the newly formed Team JJ racing outfit here this weekend. So Jinnadas is making good ground, but that battle for the lead, you could just see them. Well, there they are, charging down the straight. Look at the horsepower from that amazing Merc. And then the R8 V10 Viper, uh, Audi R8 next. So good toe there and around the outside, so much aero. Now, this is another look at what happened at six. And Antrich just blocked the rear brakes, backed the car in a little bit, and he struggled there. And that's why he ran wide, and LeBrock was able to retake that position. But... This is a very high intensity battle for the race lead. The Audi showing what it's capable of in Australian GT. Two time winners of the Bathurst 12 hour race as well. Well, these guys lapping in the one minute 29s and 30s. We know LeBrock can just get a little bit quicker than that. I'm gonna say he's uh, just being nice to the tires at this point in time. The Erebus Motorsport crew being led by Barry Ryan will be on the radio uh, giving him target lap times. And at the moment it is uh, target number one, stay number one. Well, how's the difference here? First three cars separated by two and a half seconds on the road. One of them's a V8 front engine rear drive car. The other one is a mid-engine V10. And the next car's a rear engine flat six, the Porsche. So three completely different architectures running one, two, and three on the road. And they're getting past the Lamborghini, which is different again. So amazing stuff as we see Antunes dive down the inside. Here goes LeBrock again. Antunes is driving the squirk number six car very hard. So he hands over to car owner Rod Salmon. They have absolutely no penalties for seated or pro drivers. So the squirk.com.au Melbourne Motorsport Audi will be at a distinct advantage as we see the Erebus Motorsport SLS just charge away over the back of the hard stand there. Well, this was good stuff. Dive down the inside. He had a real go. And you can see the traction control catch it. These cars have got a multi-stage traction control switch so they can change how aggressive it is on the cars as the leader pits jack lebrock runs down to barry ryan and the erebus motorsport team in pit lane and they'll do their work jack will spend quite a bit of time in pit lane but five from five so far qualifying lap record on saturday race lap record in the first race that he won by 30 seconds and he's on course to do it again but he's just had to work that little bit harder today Daz than he has so far this season. Certainly and we're just seeing the recovering Michael Hovey who is leading the GT4 class this weekend. The pit stops are underway this race starting to warm up back with more from Sydney. The Shannons Nationals and the Australian GT Championship right after this short break.
pit stops well underway here at Sydney Motorsport Park. It's the Shannons Nationals and round four of the Australian GT Championship presented by Pirelli. Speaking of Pirelli, former Pirelli GT3 Cup Challenge Porsche winner Matt Kingsley jumps in the Porsche. He's sharing with Cook this weekend and he'll take over. They're leading the Challenge division and this is a Ferrari that will be challenging for a podium in the outright division this weekend. Peter Edwards sharing with John Bow in the Marinello Motorsport Ferrari 458. Very busy at the wheel there in the Il Bellarosso racing Ferrari. He comes in right behind our race leader. So out of the pits comes Jack LeBrock in the Mercedes and Peter Edwards wanting to get on with the, his own race he's got. They've got extra time to serve in the pits being that John Bow is now a categorised a master. So he's moved on from pro and he's now the master and he is chasing down that uh, Mercedes. Was there ever any doubt in the world that JB would be anything other than a master? He jumped into an electric radical earlier on today and did a really good job. So he can drive just about anything as the Janetta gets its service. This is the car that we saw early on striking dramas, the Darren Berry and Keith Kasulki entry. Looks like Keith jumping out, Darren jumping in that car, the car owner, to take it to the flag. Have a look at this, the crew just getting ready to wave him on. There's Michael Hovey, the leader in this part of the championship. Time down and he moves out of the pits as well. So just in front of the fellow competitor in the sports class, the GT4 Janettas, four or five of them here this weekend and making up a great part of the lap. Once we get to Queensland Raceway, these uh, cars are going to be very handy indeed with the way they get the power down and squirt between straights. So keep an eye out for that one. Yeah, three and a half litre V6 uh, mid mount or front mid mount engine as the M Motorsport Lamborghini pits and looks like some sticker Pirelli tyres going on. And there's Stephen Richards jumping in, fresh from a pretty good round in Porsche Carrera Cup Australia in the Porsche. So here's Peter Edwards. He brings the Maranello Ferrari in. This team very much racing in tribute of our great mate Alan Simonson, who was so tragically killed at Le Mans just a few weeks ago. A big tribute on the roof of the 458, a car that remains the fastest ever GT car around Mount Panorama in Alan's hands. And the M Motorsport crew get over the red line. They're going to do front tyres as well. They've got plenty of time. And here's the inside view of a pit stop. Edwards in and John Bauer will take over the Ferrari. Of course, Alan Simonson spent a lot of time with the Maranello Motorsport crew over the years and indeed took the 2007 Australian GT Championship and there was a fitting tribute before this race from all of the GT teams to their great mate, Alan. As we see our master go in, John Bow, and he is set to go and let's see what uh, the master can do at the wheel and we've got another very experienced racer at the wheel of this Lamborghini. There is a question mark, an um, ever slight question mark over this car after its incident yesterday, but they have got it back out on track and Justin's been churning out some reasonable lap times as well. Yeah, strange dramas with that car and as you mentioned earlier on, Daz, it stopped in the warm up as Jinnah Darsa has dramas and goes straight ahead at turn 10 and he's gonna park that in the infield by the looks of it. So the JJA Consulting Lamborghini has serious issues. Real dramas with this car. They had uh, alternator and alternator belt issues during racing this weekend as well. So, uh, well, at least Jan's got himself some good laps down and very encouraging to continue on for the rest of this season. John Bauer at the wheel, a quick look over his shoulder, and it's probably the last time he'll do it during this race. Yeah, so he's going to go out in chase of third position in this race, and he needs to hunt down... Uh, Roger Largo and Tony Quinn in the Aston Martin. Jack Perkins in the Janetta G50. Jack, uh, I spoke to him earlier this weekend, of course, a man with so much experience in V8 supercar racing, really enjoying driving this car and the challenge that it offers and trying to get it a little bit closer to the cars at the front of the field. And he's been working with Mark Griffith for a long time as a driver coach and working with him and Mark sponsors in turn Jack's development series, V8 supercar campaign. So bit of quick pro quo but it works well as Clark Quinn the number one VIP pet foods Porsche gets pit lane and this very experienced VIP team headed up by Brett Francis goes to work have a look at the size of the brakes on there the very very famous Porsche brakes well on display there is John Bow having uh, a big off there and that is uh, down at turn four I think that was where he was coming through and that was uh, something we don't see very often so more pit lane action underway. The squirt team in. Nathan Antunes jumps out. Car owner Rod Salmon, himself a very experienced GT racer, jumps in the Audi R8 LMS. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing sometimes, Daz, because we've had some teams with very long pit stops, like Jack LeBrock and Erebus Motorsport, 
with the fact that Jack is a seeded driver, so he's got a longer penalty time in pit lane, but it'll jumble the order around, and this race isn't quite clear as to who's in front just yet. Yeah, it will start to shake out, but gee, the uh, Melbourne Performance Centre guys, Rick Kemp at work there as well, he's tuning this car for these guys this weekend, and uh, well, to say uh, a legend of uh, GT tuners, that's what Rick Kemp is, and of course the Melbourne Performance Centre guys bringing him in to make sure that Rod Salmon and Nathan Andrews have got the very best possible chance at this. And as I mentioned earlier, a bit of a masterstroke by that crew to get Nathan Andrews in. He comes with absolutely no baggage as far as penalties and times are concerned. That may come in the he, future. He will now if he does another round. It may but come. He's been incredibly fast and uh, the first person in three rounds to really get up and challenge Jack LeBrock for track position now. As far as, yeah, well, there's confirmation. So that is a change of the lead. So the Audi is actually out in front of Jack LeBrock. Now, how does that work, you might ask, when they're well behind when they pitted? Well, that's the compulsory pit stop time. Dropped the number 63 Airbus Motorsport Merc down the order and got the Audi track position. So Rod Salmon, cold tyres on the Audi, will be uh, having to fend off a very, very fast Jack LeBrock, who's dominated this season so far. Rod Salmon's not looking as though he's completely comfortable in the car either just yet. He's been quite slow at getting up to speed, although we just saw him get past a uh, Porsche that looks like it's slowing as well. Jack LeBrock has now got him in the sights, and we're about to see a lead change here. This is actually for the race lead, the Squirk.com interactive schooling Audi versus the Erebus Motorsport. Both cars on Pirelli, so there is absolutely no difference in that respect. Both German marks, and have a look at this. Jack LeBrock now got the power deficit. Uh, well, there isn't one between these two. They're really running pretty hard at it. Yeah, but watch LeBrock fire out of the corner on hot Pirellis, and that car grips up, and he should just drive away now from Rod Salmon. He set a new lap record three laps after his pit stop uh, earlier on in this race to a 127.9, which is some kind of remarkable lap time from LeBrock. And it means they've taken a full second out of the Australian GT lap record here at Sydney Motorsport Park. This is uh, for P5 and 6. It's Roger Largo in the JVS Lamborghini up against John Bow in the Marinello Motorsport Ferrari. Ferrari v Lamborghini. They're built about 150 k's apart in northern Italy and they're racing on the tracks in western Sydney here in Australian GT. I tell you what, there's nothing quite like a battle between the prancing horse and the raging bull and Roger Largo doing just exactly that at the wheel at the moment, showing a quite a wide back to his Gallardo there. But John Bow's played this game before many, many times there's traffic in front he'll be calculating exactly where he can do it on this sydney motorsport park layout has a bit of a look down the inside that big eye veco sign will be ranging up huge in the side mirrors of roger lago he's played the game and there it is john bow gets through well good move we saw some good moves earlier on from nathan anchins he's made a sparkling debut in australian gt this weekend and he's down in pit lane with summer boat Nathan Antunes now joins me, third to start today. You quickly got into second, but never before in a GT. What is going on? <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't raced in a long time, uh, but uh, it hasn't left my blood. It's still in there, um, and I know, I'm, I know I can do the job, um, and I'm just thankful for Rod for uh, giving me the opportunity to drive with him this weekend. Um, and, yeah, I'm, hopefully I showed what I can do. We should mention that uh, Nathan qualified that car second less than a tenth behind Jack LeBrock in qualifying and interesting to note behind that shot was uh, James Winslow just wandering through. He drove the Squirk Audi at Phillip Island and did a tremendous job in that car. So Rod's had a succession of gun co-drivers in that car so far this year as John Bauer continues his charge forward. His next target is Tony Quinn in the Darrell Lee Chocolates Aston Martin Vantage GT3. New car to Australia this year and JB looks down the inside at turn six and should be able to get Another position, that's P4. So he's really flying. How good's Tony Quinn been lately? He was amazing at Phillip Island and he's carried that great form over to Sydney Motorsport Park. Not bad for a guy that's got several major businesses on his plate and just jumps in a racing car for a weekend. It's basically his game of golf. You've got to say that it is the uh, tune to win type attitude, isn't it? He takes exactly that competitive spirit off the uh, off the boardroom table and brings it back to the racetrack and right back to the boardroom table again. And uh, Taking all of that aside, as a racing driver, Tony Quinn this year has really stepped up. At Phillip Island, he raced with the best of them out there. He went wheel to wheel with them. And as is the way a lot of the time in uh, the GT racing, they don't actually bang wheels, but they just get very close to each other. 
So that's a change of position we're seeing on screen as well. Clark Quinn has got by Rod Salmon for second place. And you can see the Ferrari closing in. So John Bow's target won't necessarily be Rod Salmon now for third. It will be Clark Quinn for second. He'll want to get to the back of the Porsche by the final lap and try and have a go to get to second place. And we spoke about how good Ferrari v Lamborghini is. Porsche v Ferrari is even better. That's the Holden Fort rivalry in Salmon. Runs wide, and for the second lap in a row, John Bauer gets a position at turn six. That's a nice bit of work there, uh, also by Rod Salmon. He knew he wasn't going to be able to uh, hold John Bauer off for too long, so he uh, opened the door ever so slightly, and that's all you need for JB to charge through. Now, this is very reminiscent of races gone by. We're actually now seeing John Bauer chasing down Clark Quinn as well on track. So we did hear Bowie after the last round at Phillip Island uh, heaping respect on uh, Clark oh, Quinn. Roger Largo around the outside of Rod Salmon at turn four. That takes commitment. A lot of aero in these cars, so they've got plenty of grip, but good move. Gets it done. Well, the interesting thing here is that uh, Kutsamides is also weighing in on this battle. This is all for place, so Largo's gone through in the JBS Lamborghini. And have a look at this, we've got two Audis. We've got the LMS Ultra and the uh, LMS going through there, and both this weekend for the first time coming out of the same garage down at the Melbourne Performance Centre. Yeah, and the difference between them, the Ultra, is the current upgrade, the 2013 specification car, which is now allowed in Australian GT. The standard LMS hasn't got those last little updates. It's a different rear wing, dive planes on the front, little tuning details that evolve these cars year on year and give them a little bit more downforce, a little bit more aero. This is now the battle for second place. We spoke about JB flying. He is, he's cruised up to the back of Clark Quinn and it's now on for second. Let's see how this battle pans out. The interesting thing this weekend, the Erebus Motorsport crew have uh, sent the car that was used at Phillip Island to uh, the uh, motorsport show. They've re-sticked it up so it looks like the Bathurst 12 winning car. And now Jack LeBrock is driving the car that Craig Baird took to victory at the Clipsville 500 in two races. So he's been entrusted with uh, both the steeds out of the shed. Yeah, actually they had both running on Friday. He was doing some hot laps in the 12-hour winning car for some lucky guests before that car was shipped off to the show. So. Yeah, uh, good stuff for Erebus Motorsport. Pretty busy outfit, of course. Meanwhile, whilst we've been seeing this great battling, LeBrock started the final lap. He's smashed them in this second half of the race. He has driven away. He's out in front by almost a minute now, Darren. This has just been a remarkable drive. And I spoke to someone at Phillip Island who watched Jack LeBrock drive this thing through the Southern Loop, which is one of those high commitment corners that you either come in and come out of well, or you don't come out of at all. And he said, very rarely do you see GT cars driven that hard. It's been a great transition for him into these big racing cars, hasn't it? Yeah, and certainly this crew know about big drivers. They've had some of the world's finest GT drivers over the last 12 months driving for them. And the fact that they've recalled Jack LeBrock for a second go at this, and let's hope he gets to run out the championship because he's actually chasing Clark Quinn down for points as well. Magnificent looking Mercedes SLS GT3 coming on to the straight for the final time. Champ written across the window. Is that going to be a fact or is that just what the championship is at the moment? Down the straight he comes for Pirelli in the Australian GT Championship. It was three for three before today. He's hit them for four this weekend. Jack LeBrock takes the round victory. He's got a perfect score in Aussie GT so far and a very happy Betty Clemenko hugging the Erebus Motorsport team. And happy birthday to Betty as well. Her birthday just this weekend. So what a great birthday present. Meanwhile, Porsche v Ferrari, second place. John Bow attacking Clark Quinn. It's not over either, Richard. Right now, the VIP Pet Foods Porsche just watching a little bit of wheel spin coming out of turn six that time around. Bowie over into the dirt there, so the commitment hasn't backed off. Not for one iota yet. They're still charging up to the top end now. You've got to say the VIP Pet Foods Porsche has got just the nice gap it needs to as Bowie has one last lunge at it. Yeah, right where the Ferrari's good is mid-corner, but the Porsche gets out of a corner so well with that massive rear wing and the big rear tyres. And Clark will see that as a race victory. And all he's doing now is extending a championship lead. So well done to Clark Quinn. He's a happy boy. Second place holds out John Bow in a very entertaining race. Tony Quinn finished fourth in the Aston Martin, and it was five brands in the top five with Roger Lago's uh, fifth. Rod Salmon in the Audi ended up sixth. Three from three and a lap record. What was working for you? Um, I don't know, it's obviously just got the car going quite well and obviously I'm getting used to it more and more every time I drive it. Um, and yeah, just that last race managed the tyres a lot better than what I did yesterday and 
um, yeah, it came together quite nicely. We got a new lap record by another six cents, I think it was. So, yeah, very happy with that. Fantastic stuff. And I was talking to Betty a little earlier, and she was saying it's important to let you do it your way, which is very much uh, a part of what she feels is getting you the winning streak. Uh, yeah, I've had a routine for the last few years that I've done when I'm uh, racing Formula Ford and everything like that. So, yeah, it's um, what I do and just, uh, just go about my own thing. And, yeah, it's working quite well to taking tips and hints from all the guys and just pick and choose what I like and what works. And, yeah, it's going well. Yeah, great performance by Jack LeBrock, and he's not out of championship contention either with two rounds to go. Clark Quinn leads the way over LeBrock with Tony Quinn, a very competitive third, and Peter Edwards fourth. Ben Fosal leads the way in the challenge division over George, his dad, and Brendan Cook up to third now with his teammate Matt Kingsley fourth. Well done to Stephen McLaughlin. He's the trophy division winner this weekend, and that class battle looking good. And as always, it's a battle of the Genetas in the sports division in Australian GT. Well done to our winners this weekend. Another very competitive weekend of motor racing as Rod Wilson from Pirelli presents the trophies. Another great round and a round winner to Jack LeBrock for Erebus Motorsport in Australian GT. Don't forget, for more information about the Shannons Nationals, head to thenationals.com.au. That's it for this week. We'll see you next time we go racing for the Shannons Nationals. A great winning partnership for Team Erebus there. And what about the battle between John Bow and Clark Quinn in the dying stages? German precision taking top honours this time at the drop of the chequered flag. Let us know what you thought about the racing on Facebook and Twitter as we go to a quick break.